go ahead and uh, bring you a demonstration from a company called Vertical of an application named Studio or Vertical Studio. It's available for iOS and Android. And one of the first things that I want to demonstrate is its visual tracking ability. It has the ability to use the camera on the drone in order to track something in real time. So the first demonstration I want to bring you is, is of its tracking ability. So the first thing you'll see on the left hand side are three icons. The square at the top is how you activate tracking. The X in the middle is how you turn it off. And the circle is how you execute orbit with tracking. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, what you want to do is, is you first want to activate it. And then the object that you want to track, you're going to put two fingers or your finger and your thumb on either corner of the item that you want to track. And you'll see it get highlighted. And I'm going to put down the controller here so you'll see that it's actually visually tracking me and not the controller. So the green box is going to follow me. The blue box is what the camera of the Phantom is actually focusing on. So as I slow down, it'll catch up. Uh, and then as I move uh, or speed up, I'll get further away. And the white line will give you an idea of how far off it is. If the green box goes to yellow, it's getting almost to its maximum distance. If it goes red for a moment, you most likely you lose the tracking. So uh, I'll explain in a moment uh, a few things as far as how this tracking on the camera works. But one thing that I want to demonstrate here is that you have the ability to walk almost completely under the drone. Uh, if you do walk, you can walk directly underneath it, but it has to be relatively slow. So here I may be about five feet off of the center and you'll see the camera pan all the way down. And as I continue to walk, the drone will actually rotate around. So that's one of the key things that you want to keep in mind in the system. Uh, right now, the drone will not follow you. Uh, only the camera will still stay focused on the item that it's tracking. So the camera will rotate around counterclockwise as well as clockwise, and it'll also pan the camera up and down in order to stay focused. You do have the ability to fly the drone while it's tracking, uh, so you can have it keep up with the item that you want to track. So the next thing that I'm going to show you is the ability to orbit along with tracking. So you can track a particular item doing this. And uh, I'm turning it into uh, F as in Foxtrot mode here. I've had it, I'm focusing it on myself. And then once you get it focused, you'll see that circle icon on the left-hand side light up. You can click on that in order to activate the orbit mode. And what will appear at the bottom of the screen, you'll see it says speed, clockwise, counterclockwise, or left or right. You can click on those left or right arrows, clockwise and counterclockwise, in order to start the rotation mode of the, uh, of the Phantom. Uh, the more you click it, the faster it will, will go. So you can see that you can set it in very small increments and it'll actually orbit around the item that it's tracking. Uh, now here's kind of the offset to this. Uh, I don't see this mode as being extremely useful. Uh, it could be used, I think, in rare situations. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start walking around. Now, the Phantom, it's going to lose it here, and I'll have to uh, just start it back up by uh, tapping myself again. Uh, then I have to reactivate. So if it loses tracking, the orbit mode actually turns off. You just have to turn it back on. But kind of the drawback to this is that if the item that you're tracking is moving, the Phantom is still trying to orbit it. So if I walk the same direction, generally, that the Phantom is moving, it's going to have to almost go straight or create a very oval or wide circle. 
Uh, so you can almost cancel out the orbit mode if you walk the same direction that the Phantom is flying, uh, walking, riding a bike, whatever it's tracking. Uh, so the, the way that it becomes, I think, most useful is if the item that it's tracking is moving very little, if, if you're using the orbit mode, or as you see I'm demonstrating in this case, uh, it's very, it, it does a very good job if the item is moving in the opposite direction, uh, because then what the only thing that you're really doing is, is you're causing the phantom to orbit in a smaller circle. Uh, it's kind of like a tug and war. You're pulling it one direction and it's kind of still swinging that direction. So uh, it's, a, it's nice that they've added this mode in there. Uh, you have the ability to, you know, having the ability to orbit along with the tracking. Uh, I just don't know how useful it's going to be, you know, in the real world. But, uh, uh, and it, it, you know, and also as you move around, the drone's going to be moving. There might be objects in the area. So you really have to be careful with that. I want to show you with the tracking ability is just kind of a, a little bit different way of using it. I don't know that this will be the first thing that will come to someone's mind, but I think that how tracking is probably going to be most useful, <laughs> for lack of better ways of putting this, is tracking a stationary object. Really what you're doing is, is you're allowing the application to stay focused on the item that you want to be filming or to photograph. Now you no longer have to worry about focusing the camera on that particular item. You're able to solely fly the Phantom around and get the shots that you want to get without having to work uh, the rotation of the camera uh, or the rotation of the drone. Uh, and also panning the camera up and down. Uh, you can see in this example, I'm just focusing on this little play area of the field. I'm able to fly the phantom around and it's gonna stay focused on that. It could be a statue, could be a building, could be really anything. You no longer have to worry about focusing that camera. And uh, the other thing that I wanna to bring to your attention might be a little bit confusing so I'll bring I want to I want to let you know about it is that as you move the phantom around the phantom is going to rotate right and left in order to stay focused on the item that you have that you're tracking so the movement of the drone uh, has to be compensated so the drone may move to the left it may rotate to the left in order to stay focused so now your forward movement or your different movements are going to change as well but I think this is going to be the most useful way to use tracking. The next thing that I want to demonstrate for you is something that Vertigo calls walls. And uh, what you're able to do is, is in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the map of the area. I'll bring that up. With your finger, once you activate walls, you're able to draw on the map anywhere you want uh, with your finger and create a wall. I'll go ahead and do this right over the area where I'm standing. I'll expand it a little bit there to make it a little bit larger, but this wall can be any shape that you want. Uh, you can make several walls if you want. And uh, you'll see as I'm demonstrating here, I'm leaving the map up. Uh, once you do that, the drone will not fly through that wall uh, I'm showing you several times here. I'm flying pretty much as fast as I can right at that wall. Uh, and it well, the drone stops before it hits the wall. So it knows how quickly it has to break depending on how fast it's going in order to stop before it goes through that wall. Uh, so I'll do that several times here, and you'll see as it goes towards that wall, it draws that green line. And uh, you'll get a little warning up at the top where the GPS 
uh, wording is located to let you know that it's going out of that GPS mode in order to, to uh, start the braking process. So what you're able to do is, is if there's a building in the area or maybe some trees, a uh, power line that you don't want to hit but you're not able to focus on it, just go ahead and uh, put up a wall around those so you're not so, you know, you can avoid hitting them. Uh, I see this as a very useful feature on this app. So the last thing that I want to demonstrate here, uh, I created this wall, you can see in the lower left hand corner. Uh, this is going to be tracking with walls. So you're able, you're able to use the camera tracking, the visual tracking, along with the walls feature. So I have that wall set up. I'll go ahead and uh, create tracking on myself so that the drone tracks myself. And I'll go ahead and start walking towards that wall. Uh, I'll activate the wall there. There, I should have it turned on. And I'll go ahead and start walking around so that I know the drone is tracking me. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following myself by manually controlling that drone and flying it forward in order to keep close to me. And you'll see that the drone overrides my input with the sticks to where it will just not go through that wall. It'll still track me, uh, but it will not go through that wall. And I can move it away from the wall or move it around. As long as I don't go through that wall, it'll still fly wherever I want it to go. And again, it'll keep tracking uh, the item that you want to track there. So you can use this. You could use these two things together. I think that they'll be very uh, handy uh, to have those things together. Here, I believe uh, I'm going to go ahead and change it a little bit. Uh, I deleted that wall, and you can create any type of wall, a circle around the drone, uh, if that's what you want, so that you can use the tracking ability, but you don't have to worry about the drone, again, hitting a building, hitting power lines, getting close to some trees. You can go ahead and wall those whole areas off uh, for the area that you're flying in, and then concentrate uh, I'm flying the drone and the tracking ability. So now I don't have to worry about bumping into any trees. Uh, and I don't have to worry about adjusting the camera in order uh, to follow whatever I want to have keep in focus. I can just, just keep, you know, focused on flying the drone around and, and lining up that shot. And uh, I think that these two items used together would be extremely useful. So again, uh, this has just been a quick demonstration of some of the features and capabilities of the app uh, studio or vertical studio made by the company Vertical. Uh, it's available on Android and iOS. I will go ahead and link to uh, both of those stores down below and uh, put some additional information uh, to the website so you can take a look at it. Uh, I won't mention the cost just in case it changes, uh, but uh, I believe as of this video, it was free without recording. So it was free to try. Uh, you're just not able to record from the Phantom. I think it's only right to mention a few issues uh, that I have with the application. Everything that it does, I think it does wonderfully. Um, I'll just go ahead and mention that I would like to see more statistical information, especially at the top of the application, the number of lock satellites, uh, perhaps the uh, voltage that's available in each battery, the typical information that you see in the DJI Go app, as well as a, a few of the other applications that are out there on the market. Of the uh, this video uh, production date, it does not have the capability to automatically follow what it's tracking. Uh, with the firmware that DJI has just recently put out, that is a capability. So you might see it added to this app in the near future. 
As always, uh, if you have any questions uh, or just want to make any comments, please feel free to leave that information in the comment section below, and uh, I'll try to get back to you. Thanks very much for your time.